I'm here at uh, Singularity University, and one of the most interesting things is innovations in the car industry. Normally, it goes really slow, but here we have a couple of guys who really start to accelerate the innovation. And the company is called PCH Innovation, and you guys are located in uh, Berlin. Uh, describe PCH uh, for a minute uh, for me. PCH is an innovation and an invention studio. We have a very strong research team um, consisting out of engineers, designers, sci scientists. So we are continuously trying to understand how the future will look like and trying, and then we, we try to translate that into solutions. These can be future products, future services, which we then build. You're a small company. I mean, it's like 15 people in Berlin and five people in LA. And you're all top scientists, you work for all the big, uh, big brands. Okay, and they, and basically, what, uh, give me one project which you worked on, uh, one example which you worked on for some company. Uh, one example, like, say, for example, Volkswagen came to us a couple of years ago and said, could you please reinvent urban mobility for the US market? So we designed and engineered a three wheeler car with a very small engine, very sporty. That didn't make it, but you also work on real models, where, like you were telling the Volkswagen. Yes, like for example, the Volkswagen Jetta and the Volkswagen Passat for the US market and for the Chinese market, because back in the time, te about uh, 10 years ago, Volkswagen had a big problem selling cars in the market. So we had to redesign this, the, the, the vehicles according to the really mattering, important consumer needs. So, so that is really nuts and bold automobile technology. Now, here, um, they were, giving an, uh, they were giving an example how the brain-computer interface should influence uh, the future of driving. So Adrian Hopt, um, you basically were explaining what, wh how do you care as an automobile what the brain position is for, from, a, from a driver in relationship to autonomous driving? Because you say the world's going to autonomous driving and then we need the brain state because I hope that at autonomous driving, I don't need to care anymore about uh, driving the car. So what we, what we see is that, as you said, the autonomous driving is really rising, but it will be a progressive rise. And we think that even in the future, there will still be people that love driving. So it will be a mix of uh, automated, autonomous, and manual drive. And for example, we are really observing that the transition from automated to manual drive is very critical because the, the OEMs have to ensure that the driver is in the perfect state to be back to manual drive. And Go back his responsibility, pick it up. Yeah, exactly. And OEMs are aware of that problem, and they try to, to put solutions like behavioral analysis, like the way you move, or where you're looking out, or your heart rate, or your skin conditions. These signals are all very good signals, but they need to be strengthened. They need to be correlated correctly. They need to you say, we're going to figure out what the brain state is of the driver and we're going to integrate that into the user interface of the car. Yeah, exactly. By meshing that with the brain state of the driver, we are really able to know what's the level of distraction, of aggressiveness, of uh, focus on the road, all these kind of different states. So we really believe that VCI is a key enabler for uh, real futuristic autonomous driving. Yeah. And... Um, yeah. So this BCI, the, b the brain computer interface, and you don't want to do it with all kinds of uh, wires on my head, you want to do it with uh, wireless reading my brain. So are there n nice little gadgets around which basically can wirelessly read my brain? No, this is absolutely in the labs only, and we are talking about sensors that are quite big and very expensive, and this is why we believe our technology will not make it into the car, let's say, before 2020 or even 2025, because designing and engineering these wireless sensors and then integrating them in the headrest, in the ceiling, in the B-pillar of the vehicle is one of the biggest challenges of this project. Okay, so we have a lot of work. This is really stuff where you now work with wires on the brain and you slowly want to go, uh, go connectivity. How do you see, I mean, you're part of the industry, all right? You see that you really, you really know what these guys are going to do five years from now. How fast will autonomous driving rise into our modern world, Europe? Yeah, I think uh, by next year you will directly see autonomous driving. It's, that, it's just that autonomous driving doesn't mean the car drives by itself and you do nothing. It means that there are certain functions of driving that... Like highway driving. ...by a system. For example, yeah, following the car in front of you, staying to the lines, keeping the right distance. And this, 
incrementally implemented, for example, first on the highway, then to park, then in the streets, so really slow city traffic, that's really a progressive implementation. But for sure, next, next year, we, we already have, you know, Tesla has autopilot, and Mercedes has all kinds of stuff, and that kind of... In 2020, how far, how smart will autonomous driving be? What will we be able to do? I think that in two, 2020, it will be a very advanced level of autonomous driving. That means basically that the car will drive completely itself, for example, on highway. So really keeping the right distance, following the lines. Following that the doesn't lines. sound very exciting. That's what I hope my Tesla will do, you know, next, this, this to do next year. Yeah, but for example, your Tesla, you need to tell, to tell uh, the Tesla that you want to change the lane, right? Uh, in 2020, this will be done completely automatically by the car. But I think that will be in 2016 in my Tesla. I mean, uh, that won't take so long, I hope. I mean, the, the, the main problem is not the technology. The technology is already there. The main problem is really the regulations. Uh, because it's not only a question of autonomous driving. It's how do you mix autonomous car with manual cars, you know? And, and this requires uh, people to sense the outside completely differently. And that's also other projects we are working on. Are the Americans, are they the real, uh, you know, like Tesla, the outside people, are they really p pushing the bar at the Google? Or is also the good old German, uh, you know, the good en engineering also able to uh, hold up to, to basically catch up? I think what happened is the good old, good old German automotive industry, they have been continuously working on their stuff, but very slowly, not really believing that this uh, technology will be in, in the market soon. And they got a kick in their ass, if I might, might, might say that, from Google and especially also from, from Tesla. So I hope they are accelerating the programs now. And, but as we can see, for example, M M Mercedes is really a, uh, um, a speeding up the, the program, BMW is speeding up the program, Audi is really pro progressive now. But this is what the automotive industry needs. They need a push. And uh, Do you really see that the computer industry in Silicon Valley really starts accelerating the rate of innovation inside an extremely careful, safety-oriented uh, industry? Yeah. But I still think that even with that push from the ICT industry, the automotive industry is not really embracing the um, innovation speed we are currently seeing in other sectors, but they could. And I hope in the next two years, they will recognize it as absolutely necessary and valuable to pick up speed. So Adrian, you're a smart guy, you love new technology, you guys are friends with Google and everybody. Isn't the speed of innovation too boring for you in this industry? Well, because you do all these studies, and you try and you give them examples and they say, oh no, we won't do that, we won't do that, that will be five years. Isn't that frustrating? Or shouldn't you move to another industry? Uh, I think that, I don't know. I mean, one, one big thing that I think is really still very slow in, in the car and something that I personally would like to see way more is that really when I drive, I really communicate way better with the outside and I really sense what's happening around me. You know, I, I get information about this building that I'm crossing is a theater or there's a history and that it's meshing my preferences, what I like, what I dislike. Yeah, but you, you basically have all kinds of ideas, but it takes forever to implement them in this industry. So is the rate of innovation in the car industry fast enough to basically please your brain? Yeah, I mean, there are, there are too much rules, you know, so that's, 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 that's the rule. Okay, that was a fascinating insight into the innovation process. 20 smart guys from a PACH innovation and gives us an insight what's coming up next.